just four weeks ago away. They hope to hammer out agreements on bills ranging from the ethics rules to the dumping of hazardous waste. Governor Cuomo also had an active day today. The governor told a crowd at a teacher's banquet in Monroe County he is opposed to any type of mandatory testing for AIDS. Cuomo made the statements after President Reagan earlier this week called for mandatory testing of immigrants as well as other specific groups that fall into a high risk category. The New York congressman who was indicted on bribery charges earlier this week was in court today. Representative Mario Biaggi, a Democrat from the Bronx, was arraigned today. Biaggi has been accused of helping in the arrangement of bribes for government officials in the hopes of securing defense contracts. Biaggi denies having anything to do with those bribes. The car most likely to be stolen. We'll tell you what it is when we come back and a word about cystic fibrosis from the local medical community. yourself gliding across the lake this summer powered by your brand new mercury outboard now come on down to shenango outdoor equipment and let your imagination run wild stop in and experience the thrill as you test drive a new mercury powered boat we have the imperial v164 ski boat with 130 horsepower mercury just 8900 dollars or check out the sw1612 pontoon with 9.9 .9 mercury outboard only 59.95 we have several other styles and models to choose from stop in today shenango outdoor equipment route 12 in norwich Chuck Woolery talks about Love Connection. The people that come on Love Connection hold nothing back. It seems that they have no inhibition at all. When I feel like somebody is trying to withhold information from me that I think could possibly be vital to what's going on, then I go hunting. You know, it's fun even when it doesn't work out, but it's great when it does. Love Connection, a new chance for romance every day. Weekdays at 5.30 on WMGC-TV 34. Hot enough to fry an egg, also hot enough to fry a dog's brain. Your dog can't perspire. To cool off, he has to pant. Even with the windows left partly open, the hot air he's breathing can cause brain damage or even death. On a hot day, be kind to your dog by leaving him at home. Even with today's advanced medical technology, those afflicted with the disease cystic fibrosis are still dying at an early age. But the search for a cure continues. In Binghamton, doctors say they're continuing to make great strides in overcoming CF. To identify the gene, mm. the chromosome, the form of inheritance or the area in inheritance that carries the problem. And through certain kinds of genetic engineering, which carries a problem with it as well in other areas, but in certain areas of genetic engineering, we may be able to correct the disease by correcting the chromosomal or the genetic uh, abnormality. This Sunday, ABC Television will air Alex, The Life of a Child. Doctors say it accurately deals with a child suffering from CF. The film was uh, excellent, and it gives a person an understanding that's never been involved with cystic fibrosis, what a family goes through. And of course, there's no way of describing what a child goes through that actually have the, has the disease. But this film comes as close to that uh, as any film I've ever seen. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disease that cripples the respiratory system. People afflicted usually die by the time they reach their early 20s. First, it was the PTL club that was suffering all kinds of problems. Well, now the troubles have apparently spread to the 700 club, at least financial troubles. The Reverend Pat Robertson, considered by many to be a top Republican candidate for the run in 1988, today said he had to lay off 500 of his employees. Robertson says the financial mismanagement of other ministries forced him to make that change. Several top executives at that network have volunteered to take a cut in pay to help out. If you drive a Volkswagen GTI, you probably turn a lot of heads. The bad news is that some of the heads you're turning are those of thieves. The model that is now the most sought after car in the country when it comes to theft rings is the Volkswagen GTI. Insurance reports show the GTI is 12 times as likely to be stolen as any average car. The Ford Escort wagon is the least likely car to be taken. President Reagan is in Venice for the economic summit, but he got some good economic news on the home front. The nation's unemployment rate, again, held steady. Dick Sanders has the details. For the second month in a row, the unemployment rate stood at 6.3%, the lowest in a decade. And the rate held steady despite an increase of 46,000 in the number of those looking for work. 
The Labor Department said the service industries provided most of the increased employment to keep the rate down, particularly in finance, real estate, and insurance. Therefore, most of the May improvement was among adults, especially women. Black unemployment had dropped in April, but it was back up to 13.8% last month. The Hispanic rate of 8.7% was virtually unchanged, but that rate has dropped two percentage points so far this year. The jobless rate for teenagers hasn't improved much in the last six months. It stands at 17.7%. Economists caution that the nation's overall economic activity probably isn't as good as the recent unemployment figures indicate. Dick Sanders, ABC News, Washington. We finally got the comfortable spring day we've been waiting for. Also, the weekend looks good. We'll have the forecast when we come back. Chef Andy Shaw on dining out Oriental style at the Imperial Palace. Hi, I'm Andy, Huang Jia Huan Dian's chef. Welcome you to come and try our dishes. Our dishes are many. For example, there are the Beijing Cao Ya, or you don't have to understand the language. You don't have to understand the language. To appreciate superb Oriental cuisine, the Imperial Palace in the Enwell Plaza. Thank you. Excuse me, could you help me, please? Sir, could you help me, please? My little girl, she needs blood. Could you help me? Oh, I'm sorry. My daughter, she needs blood. Could you please help? Somebody, somebody help me. Imagine if you had to ask for blood to save the life of someone you love. Next time the American Red Cross asks, give blood, please. If you had a chance to get outdoors at all today for whatever it was, gardening or just a walk or whatever, it was terrific out there. Hopefully it's going to stick around. This is the day we've all been waiting for, and hopefully it will stick around. Looks like tomorrow might be a similar day, but they are calling for chance of showers by the end of the weekend. We'll get Couple to that anyway. in a minute. Right. Good. Uh, weather tonight is sponsored by First Federal. As I said, today was just gorgeous. Not a cloud in the sky. If you looked hard, you couldn't probably find one. Current temperature right now is 69 degrees. The high was 70 degrees, so temperature stayed cooled while the sun came out. Low was about 50 degrees. The record high is 86, and that was set back in 1953. The record low is 38, set back in 1964. The humidity right now at a very comfortable 43%. Winds are out of the north at 8 miles per hour, and that barometer stands at 30.10, and it is steady. We are looking very nice today, sunny over much of the northeast, and the reason is this cold front finally made its way off the coast. It's sitting off the Atlantic coast right now. Are still a clouds and a few showers accompanying that cold front, but as long as they're off the coast, it doesn't matter. Behind it, cooler temperatures and sunnier skies, drier conditions. What more could you ask for? And hopefully stick around by tomorrow. There is calling for a chance of slight showers tonight our chance of a few sprinkles tonight. This is a very weak cold front that will make its th way through the state, but because the conditions are so dry, it shouldn't affect the weather too much, possibly a few sprinkles. Tomorrow, they are saying it's going to clear out to, for another nice day. Warm, just um, all the way from the south back into the uh, Midwestern states of the Greater Plains, out to the west, warm conditions, sunny skies, very nice for the, much of the nation, except for the Pacific Northwest. There is a cold front moving in off the Pacific Northwest, bringing them a few showers, but nothing too much to complain about. And there's low pressure sitting over Phoenix. Actually, that's a thermal low, and that just means it's very, very hot down there. As you can see, 91 degrees down in Phoenix right now. Just a little bit to the west in San Diego, they're only at 69. If we take a look at the satellite shot right now, you can see those clouds that are sitting right off the eastern coast. Much of the Atlantic coast is clear. Take a look out to the western states. There is that front moving on on the Pacific Northwest, bringing them a few showers. 
Throughout the Midwest, really not much to talk about. A few clouds, but mostly clear and nice weather. When we come back, we'll take a look at the forecast and New York State. Stay with us. At First Federal, we're working harder to help you enjoy all the good things in life with a world of new opportunities for your home, your family, your financial future. When you're looking for a mortgage or refinancing, First Federal is your home advantage. Get low rates, quick approval, and choose the mortgage that best fits your needs. Find out more. Call your nearest First Federal branch or mortgage office today. Your home advantage with over 90 years experience in home financing. First Federal. Just a beautiful day across New York State today. Sunny skies and temperatures mostly into the 60s. A few areas in Pennsylvania reached into the 70s. And to the eastern parts of the state, they are still very warm. 80 degrees in New York City, 75 in Albany. But everywhere else, mostly into the lower to mid-60s. Taking a look at the forecast tonight, we are calling for clouding, cloud, cl let's get this right, cloudy skies. Uh, Clouds will be moving in, and we are calling for a chance of sprinkles. The low will be about 50 degrees. And then tomorrow, sunny skies becoming partly cloudy by the afternoon, high about 70. Sunday, there is a good chance of showers, unfortunately, high about 70. Then on Monday and Tuesday as well, a chance of showers. Wednesday will be fair. Tomorrow morning as you're waking up, partly cloudy skies and 58 degrees. So you definitely want to get outside tomorrow. Take advantage of the weekend on Saturday because it's going to turn cloudy and rainy by Sunday. All right, thank you, Darcy. A preview of the Belmont Stakes. We'll have that up next in sports. Also, the ailing Celtics will get a couple of days off to recuperate. Sports is next. At Wonderful World of Windows, you can decorate your home elegantly and affordably. With free in-home decorating and many different styles and colors, you owe it to yourself to compare prices. There's no obligation. Call 1-800-422-1480 for custom window treatments at reasonable prices. That's 1-800-422-1480 for Wonderful World of Windows. 1-800-422-1480. 422-1480. On the next Mama's Family, Mama's grandson has taken up the drums. You start wearing an earring and you're out of here. But has he also taken up stealing? I don't want drums, you little bandit. I want my pearls. Just who is the thief? Perhaps it was you. I wouldn't be seen dead in them puny little pellets. Is Bubba the guilty party? Well, thank you, Perry Mason. It's Mama for the Defense on the next Mama's Family. Saturday at 7.30 on WMGC TV 34. Mike Kelly, the night off. All right, apparently we were going to go to a commercial. We're going to stay with us for a while, though. Mike Catalana has the night off. Darcy Thornton graciously filling in on sports. We're going to talk about the Celtics, first of all. Last night of came course. out. Everybody said they would come back a little rejuvenated. They didn't I said that. Mike said me. they wouldn't. I said they probably would come back, but hopefully they are returning home in the next game. Maybe they will be a little more rejuvenated. Maybe I don't know. Or <laughs> major surgery or something. <laughs> The Celtics did play better than they did in the first series game, but it still wasn't good enough. Now all the Celtics can do is pray for a home court advantage. Last night at the Forum, the Lakers came to play, and they lived up to their fast break reputation. Early on in the first quarter, it's Robert Parrish fighting for the layup. Celtics started strong, but it was L.A. the rest of the way. The Lakers' James Worthy had an impressive night, scoring 23 points. He sails past the ailing Kevin McHale for the layup. Michael Cooper scoring one of his six three-point plays, by the way, an NBA record. McHale misses, and the Lakers rebound, and on the fast break to the other side, Kareem eventually gets the ball, and he's in for the stuff. L.A. leading by 12. Larry Bird, though, not giving up early in the third period. He cuts the Lakers' lead to 18. Casey Jones not looking, or is looking a little worried, as he should, as Byron Scott. Again, the Lakers steal. He takes it all the way down court for the layup and the score. Actually, this stuff, and the Lakers could not be stopped. Magic Johnson shot his block, but he gets his own rebound and scores. Two of his 22 on the night. Again, L.A. gets the loose ball, as it was all night long, passing down court again for the score. Kareem getting a little excited on the bench. Not often you see him with that kind of reaction. Finally, Cooper with the last of his three-point plays. Larry Bird not looking too happy done anything but hold home court advantage. Uh, Larry should know because he's the master of the three-point shot, and I'm just trying to keep up with him. But still, we have our work cut out for us going back to Boston. You know, it's, it's tough come back when you're down two, two games, and um, 
we got three in Boston, and, and uh, the pressure's on us. There's no question about that, and we're going to play a lot better than we have. Collective uh, effort on offense and uh, defense, too, and I think tonight... Uh, uh, we, you know, we showed that uh, we've been, uh, you know, versatile uh, all year long, pretty much. The final score, 141 to 122, Game 3 in Boston on Sunday, where I hear they don't have any air conditioning. The long-awaited debut of Mets pitcher Dwight Gooden takes place tonight. Gooden spent most of April in drug rehabilitation. Coach Mel Stottlemyre is warning fans not to get too excited or expect too much from Gooden tonight. The Mets host the Pittsburgh Pirates before an expected sellout crowd at Shea Stadium tonight. We'll have highlights at 11. There are several other games on the National League schedule for tonight, but only one this afternoon. And of course, those are the Chicago Cubs as they take on the St. Louis Cardinals this afternoon. The game is in the third inning, and the Cubbies are le leading one to nothing, as I said, in the third inning. Well, the Yankees are in Milwaukee again tonight to take on the Brewers. The Yankees' impressive road record from the beginning of the year is now down to just one over 500 games after a loss last night. The game got off to a bad start. First inning, Rob Deere of the Brewers goes deep on Joe Necro's pitch. It's out of here. 1-0 Milwaukee. It took the Yankees until the fourth inning to get a hit off of Ted Higuera. Don Mattingly with a single to right field. But the Yankees kept hitting into double plays. Here Dave Winfield hits into one of four on the night. Ball goes to second base, first base. They're out of there. Then in the fourth, Deer comes through again, his second of the night. Another home runner. The Brewers beat the Yankees 9-3. Top seeded Ivan Lendl of Czechoslovakia will go up against Sweden's Mats Wielander on Sunday in the finals of the French Open. Lendl defeated Mir Miroslav Mechir, also of Czechoslovakia, 6-3, 6-3, Lendl dominated the first and second sets, but Mechir caught fire in the third, forcing Lendl to a tiebreaker. In the other semifinal match, Wielander ousted West German Boris Becker by a score of 6-3, 6-1, 6-2. Both Lendl and Wielander our two-time champions at the French Open. The women's final takes place tomorrow. Martina Navratilova will take on Steffi Graf of West Germany. Also tomorrow afternoon on Channel 34, Ali Sheba will attempt to become the 12th horse, horse in history to win the Triple Crown, but the Belmont will not be an easy one. Standing in the way will be trainer Woody Stevens, who has captured the last five Belmont stakes. This year he has two horses, Conquista Rose and Gone West who will start in spots one and two. In 1985, it was Prem Fresh who took the Belmont. In last year's race, Danzig Connection was the winner. Neither of his horses are favorites this year, but they aren't long shots either, so don't bet against Stevens. You don't like those what? I just think of those five and, and uh, be blessed that I've got those, because I don't think anyone else will. That's a good feeling. That's all oh, wonderful. The more I think about it and read about it, and know that uh, it's been a hundred years since anyone's won three in a row. That five looks mighty big to me. <laughs> One of the questions for this race is its length, which could be a problem. A horse is bred good enough to go the mile and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been running good, but he may not get the mile and a half. Yeah. But a lot of them won't. Yeah. Ali Sheba might not, too. Yeah. Yeah. There are ten horses entering the race. Ali Sheba is the favorite, as it was in the last couple of races. Actually, this last race, not the first one. Cause last Triple Crown winner? Uh, you got me there. Seattle Slough, 1977. <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. Still ahead in this newscast, a look at an area fishing tournament you've got to see to believe. And the newest voice of an old friend. Guess which spinach eating a salad is a master running now? Me, Popeye. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Rich, owner and general manager of Burdick Rich Motors in Vestal and the new Burdick Rich Pontiac Toyota in Endicott, where our motto is dedicated people committed to excellence. Service is the backbone of our business and we take great pride in our service department with its six master technicians to serve you. Our staff of trained consultants will advise you on the best automobiles to suit your wants and needs and I'm always available to help you. So stop in and visit us at Burdick Rich Motors on the Vestal Parkway or at the new Burdick Rich Pontiac Toyota in Endicott. It's easy. It's fast and it goes over anything. It reduces condensation and noise. It's not metal so it can't rust or corrode. It's the first group with a lifetime warranty and it's beautiful. 
It's Angeline, the Lifetime Roofing. Finally, a new way of thinking at the top. Available at Coral Electric in Windsor, 88 BC Lumber in Nineveh, Bowen's Lumber, Binghamton, and True Value Home Center in Oregon. Many of us grew up watching those old cartoons featuring the adventures or misadventures of Popeye the Sailor Man. Well, the man behind the popular voice has died, but there is a new voice with a familiar ring. Josh Howell has the story. Okay, this is take one on the 30-second spot. <laughs> well, blow me down. Guess which spinach-eating sailor is a master running now? Me, Popeye. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You've probably heard this man's voice before, but never seen him. He is the new voice behind Popeye. The man who actually created Popeye's voice for those cartoons we grew up watching died recently, and this 24-year-old from Clifton, New Jersey, has won the job as his replacement. His name is Jerry Lobozo. Me, Popeye. <laughs> The Italian hero who you've loved for years. Is At this moment, he's making a radio commercial for a record that he released in Italy. A record called Popeye the Ladies Man. Baby. Here is a bit of the music video he made to go with the record. He's a ladies man. That's what I am. No more Because I'm Popeye the Ladies Man. Jerry Lobozo is getting ready to start work on some new Popeye cartoons for release here in this country. And you've probably heard his voice on many TV commercials. He's a versatile and talented voiceover artist. Do you do children's commercials? Yeah, I do a lot of children's storybook type stuff. Uh, so whatever the particular character has to be. And they want a lot of, a lot of times the animals speak and have to match the voice to the animal. Or they want a little girl or a little boy. And... I want a little girl, I, I, I become a little girl or a little boy. Popeye is really your specialty. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Ah, 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 ah. I want to ask you one last question, and I want you to give me an honest answer, because there are a lot of children on the edges of their seats right now waiting to hear the answer to this. In real life, do you eat spinach? But of course. So if you doesn't eat spinach. Ray, I've got the last story tonight. I've got the last word. And finally tonight, we leave you with a story of a sporting event. Fishing, to be more exact, it's Bob Hook Huckabone's Carpy Celebrity Pro-Am. It was held today at Griffin Park in Endicott. These fishermen, some pros, just some fishermen for a day, were up at dawn, ready to go. The weather was perfect, and they hit the banks and the water early. Some of the guests, a chauffeur from airport limousine service who drove up in other, other than a limo, of course, and our own Ray Carter was there. He had a tangled line at first, but nothing that kept him from catching anything. Did you catch anything? And I didn't catch a thing. <laughs> I didn't catch a darn thing. We're out of time. World News Tonight is up next. Good night.